What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Right on. My name is Eric Bazawi. Uh, I'll start a little bit about me. Uh, I work for a nonprofit. It's not a charity or anything. It's just the company I work for isn't making any money. Yeah. <laughs> I like to read the phone book. Anybody else like to read the phone book? The phone book, yeah. Yeah, I was, so I was reading the phone book the other day, <laughs> and, I, and I found this company, and it was called Cherish Memories Funeral Services and Crematory. And I thought, oh, cool, funerals and ice cream? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and parents out there, lots of parents. Yeah. At what age is it appropriate to tell a child that the Santa Claus parade is just a parade of lies. <laughs> I told like six kids that day. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed each one of them got ice cream, you know, after that whole mess. Because when you think about it, ice cream is just like the parental form of hush money, you know? It's like, hey buddy, dad's real sorry that he threw that baseball at your face while you weren't looking. But if you shut up about what happened today to your mom, you'll get some ice cream. Because life's a rocky road, man. It's not all bubble gum and rainbows. Uh, anybody with younger children here? Yeah? You watching Paw Patrol at all? Yeah. I've, I, I don't have kids, I have nieces and nephews, but I've watched all of Paw Patrol. And I hate to say it, you guys, uh, Sky dies in the end. <laughs> Let that one sink. Um, I grew up in Saskatoon all my life. Uh, I actually found paradise in Saskatoon. And that paradise was the liquor store downtown near my apartment. They tore it down! Yeah. <laughs> why would they do that to me? That was the only reason why I moved downtown was to have a liquor store within walking distance. <laughs> Anybody know what's going there? Library. Wrong, not the library, nothing. Yeah, exactly, they're paving it. They're paving, they're putting up a parking lot. That's right, they're paving paradise and they're putting up a parking lot. Ooh, wop, bop, bop. Ooh, wop, bop, bop. <laughs> Guys, I was very self-aware as a child. Uh, so I knew that I grew up poor. Uh, but my parents, they still like to party. So I was the only kid in second grade that got all his clothes from beer boxes, you know? I had like an OV sweater and a Labatt Blue toque, because those are old people beers. <laughs> my parents are old, but uh, I decided at a young age that I would try and save my parents some money by, uh, by skipping preschool. Yeah, because anybody that's ever had a child go through preschool knows all you ghetto, those little bastards, is just a bunch of handprint turkeys. <laughs> yeah, and I knew at a young age, my father didn't need any more handprint turkeys. What my father needed was a job. That's what he needed. Someone's got to bring home my Cheerios. We were so broke that my dad had to boil the macaroni necklace that I gave him for our Thanksgiving dinner. That's how broke we were. All right, I got a little song to play for you guys here. Uh, uh, to, I was a musician before I became a comedian, and uh, I wrote a lot of songs. I wrote a song about vanity. Uh, it's the best song ever, in my opinion. Uh, I wrote a song about, uh, or an, actually an entire album about Hitler. Uh, it sold nine copies. If you understand German, you'd know that I sold no copies. I also, 
I wrote a song about being in a relationship with my ex-girlfriend. So did five other guys that month. <laughs> All right. So to preface this song for you guys, uh, I was... Uh, has anybody ever had to have a conversation uh, with a friend that could really ruin the friendship? Well, uh, this is a song about a conversation that I had with my friend Dave. Oh, Dave, I don't like your wife, and here's the reasons why. She thinks she can bake, but she can't. <laughs> and I take tiramisu very seriously, Dave. And you know that, Dave. Yeah. Oh, you know that, Dave. Oh, Dave, I don't like your wife, and here's another reason why. She complained the whole time we were in Mexico about the heat. Well, guess what, Dave? It gets hot in Mexico, Dave. <laughs> if she didn't like the heat, you should have gone to Sweden. No, tell your wife that we don't like her, Dave. <laughs> oh, Dave. I don't like your wife, and neither does your mom or your dad. We had to talk about it. Angie doesn't like her either, and she's a great judge of character. She even forgave that DUI driver that killed her whole family, but she still hates your wife. And that says a lot about your wife, Dave. It says a lot about your wife. Also, what's up with that toddler? It's not even hers. Where did she get him? That kid is Lebanese. You are both Irish. She's never been pregnant. Where'd she get that Lebanese kid? He doesn't even speak English. No wonder he's so confused. Stop saying he's adopted. Karen works with the adoption agency. She would have seen the case file. The police have been called. So had social services. We looked up missing persons list. Guess who was on it? His name's actually Amir, not Jacob. Like your wife said, she's manipulative and you're an idiot. We're not surprised this happened to you. Dave, I think that's the cops. You should probably obey their orders. I don't want to get shot today. Dave, who's your lawyer? I'll call him for you and I'll testify on your behalf. Dave, what is your wife not telling you? Amir has a family. He's been missing for three months. Where was he the first two months? You've only had him for one. And also, Dave, your wife wears way too much orange. Just way too much orange. Dave, we don't like your wife. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm Eric Bazawi. Have a wonderful evening.